Hello, I'm Rui Wenzhang at SAS. I'm going to talk to you about a feature selection approach with ensembles in SAS Enterprise Miner. This work was done as part of a big project for analyzing marketing data. The data were used for the KDD Cup 2009 challenge, and the goal was to predict the propensity of customers to churn or upgrade their service or buy new products for a telecom company in Europe. In this video, we will focus on the churn data for our demonstration. The data set consists of 15,000 features and 50,000 instances. 206 out of the 15,000 are categorical features. Although the data set has a moderate number of instances, the number of features is quite large. And considering the multiple levels of categorical ones, this number is even larger. With so many features, you can expect many of them to be irrelevant, redundant, or noisy. And if a full model is constructed with all the features, the model will suffer from at least four problems. The first problem is computational complexity. Many traditional statistical algorithms are likelihood-based and usually start with the calculation of a covariance matrix which can be computationally expensive when you have a large number of features. Second, the problem of model interpretability, in other words, insights into the relationship between inputs and responses can be as important as prediction accuracy in some areas, like clinical trials, risk management, etc. Model complexity increases with the number of inputs, so the interpretability is sacrificed. Third, noise accumulation in high-dimensional prediction has been recognized as a problem for a long time. In a paper published in 2008, Jian Qingfang claims that classification can be as bad as a random guess due to noise accumulation when the number of features is close to or even larger than the number of observations. And last but not least, Multicollinearity is a notorious difficulty when you have a large number of features. Severe multicollinearity can increase the variance of estimates and make the estimates unstable. After you understand all the problems, the need for dimension reduction becomes obvious. Imbalanced class is also a challenge in this analysis. There are fewer than 10% samples in the minority class. When you see the term imbalanced data in research papers, it usually means that the minority class has a portion of 10 to 20%. However, in this project, as well as in many real-world cases, the data can get far more imbalanced. For example, fraud detection identifies frauds that happen in fewer than 2% of all transactions. Many medical screening tests target extremely tailed probability in the data distribution. Risk modeling of insurance data usually predicts very rare events like car accidents. The conversion rate of online advertisements could be as low as 10 to negative 3 or even 10 to negative 6. There are many similar examples in the real world, and all data analysts need to deal with imbalanced data under certain circumstances. Conventional algorithms are often biased toward a majority class because their objective is to minimize the error rate without considering the data distribution. In the worst case, minority samples are all treated as outliers and ignored, and the learning algorithm then simply generates a trivial classifier that classifies every sample as the majority class. So what shall we do when we encounter a problem like this? The bad news is that there is no overall good solution. It always depends on the data. Let's look at some popular approaches, and I will explain why they are not suitable for this analysis. An easy method at the data level is to balance the classes by using sampling, either oversampling or undersampling. However, simple sampling is not a good choice in this case because the proportion of the minority class is very small. 
Undersampling the majority class means you will throw out 80% of the samples. As a result, you lose most of the information from the data. Oversampling either replicates existing samples in the minority class or synthesizes new samples using SMOD or other algorithms. They both make the variables appear to have lower variance. Another big problem is that replicating minority samples 10 times or more will definitely cause overfitting. Another category of algorithms called anomaly detection performs essentially one class classification that doesn't consider the minority instances at all. That is something we cannot afford in our case. We will have limited vision of the data distribution if we simply ignore the minority class. There is another popular way to adjust at the algorithm level to make an existing algorithm more sensitive to the rare class. For example, you can adjust the cost of misclassifying a rare event or adjust the decision threshold. But the challenge is how you infer the cost or the threshold unless you have sufficient domain knowledge, which we certainly lack in this project. What we did in this project was to construct a boosting algorithm that trained several classifiers as weak learners on different portions of the data and then find the best subset of variables that was selected by most of the weak learners. How do you evaluate model performance with imbalanced data? Rule number one, don't use the accuracy rate or error rate. Classification accuracy is based on a simple count of misclassified samples. Even a naive model that blindly classifies all instances as majority class can achieve over 90% accuracy from our data. We certainly need to know more than that. For example, we need to know the error rate within each class. So we use the ROC curve to assess the model performance. Now let's take a look at our approach. The first step was to downsample the majority class to match the other class. But instead of doing it just once, we repeated and created a bag of balanced samples by using different random seeds. Each of them represents just a small portion of the population, but a bag of them will have good coverage. The bagging step selects the best subset of variables for each balanced data set. For this project, we chose LARS for variable selection. One reason is that it is lasso type method, which reduces the variance of estimates by shrinking the coefficients toward zero. So it performs better in the presence of collinearity. But it can certainly be replaced by other classifications like decision tree, random forest, gradient boosting, etc. In the last step, we counted the number of times that a variable was selected in the bagging process and rank the variable importance by frequency. You can see the flow diagram from SAS Enterprise Miner. The top node is the data source, and we have pre-processed the data to handle missing values, outliers, rare levels, etc. 20 balanced samples were then generated with replacement. Variable selection was conducted at each branch and the variable importance was ranked by the frequency with which the variable was selected in all the 20s. To assess the advantage of this ensemble variable selection, we compare the predictions of random forests, one using features selected by a conventional variable selection, the other with features from our approach. Data preprocessing also plays an important role in the success of this project. The original data were not clean in terms of having extreme values, rare levels, and a large percentage of missing values. Instead of using imputation to replace the missing, we addressed the issue by optimal binning and bucketing. The transformation node in Enterprise Miner can create optimal bins for numeric variables. The split is determined by minimizing an impurity measure like the Gini index. For categorical variables, we used a binning node to put missing values into one bucket and also grouped rare levels together. 
The replacement node winsorizes the data and limits the extreme values. Some of the optimally binned and standardized variables made a big contribution to our predictive model according to the final results. Here are some results. The table provides a summary of this ensemble variable selection. From left to right, the first column is the count with which a variable can be selected in the bagging process, in descending order from 20 to 0. The second column shows the frequency of variables by each count, and the third column shows the percentage. The fourth column is a cumulative frequency, which is a running total. Over 99% of the total 15,000 variables were never selected in any of the 20 classification models, and 109 variables were selected only once. To make a fair comparison with conventional variable selection, we used the top 40 variables, which were selected at least four times out of 20. And the number was chosen because if you train a LARS directly on the imbalanced data, the model yields a best set of 42 variables, which is slightly larger than 40. We then build a random forest as classifiers on the two sets of variables respectively. In the fit statistics table from the performance assessment node in Enterprise Miner, you can see that the ensemble variable selection outperformed in terms of the ROC index, which is the area under the ROC curve. The conventional method misclassified 34.5% of validation data, which is almost five times higher than the ensemble model. For more information on the Churn Prediction Project, please refer to this white paper. For more detailed information, please visit support.sas.com. Thanks for watching.